Amy Cobble from the Mass General Hospital, and I'm going to be discussing improved rates of immediate breast reconstruction at safety net hospitals by Dr. Ballard and others from the University of Michigan. Breast cancer affects one out of every eight women. When mastectomy is required for treatment or prevention of cancer, immediate breast reconstruction improves body image and quality of life. There's a federal law that guarantees a woman's right to reconstruction. However, despite this law, reconstruction rates have remained historically low. Plastic surgeons are interested in improving rates of reconstruction and reducing disparities in rates of reconstruction secondary to race, ethnicity, and sociodemographic factors. Federal the government shares this interest and plays a role in reducing disparity by offering financial assistance to safety net hospitals, which care for more minority and low income patients. The authors of the current study were interested to see if the financial assistance given to safety net hospitals translated into more immediate breast reconstructions and if the rates were comparable to standard hospitals and cancer care centers. They found a significant increase in breast reconstruction rates from 2005 to 2011 and a narrowing in the gap of disparity between safety net and non-safety net hospitals. The authors queried a nationwide inpatient database. Over a million women with breast cancer or increased risk for cancer development were included. Of these, approximately 100,000 had a mastectomy. In 2005, the rate of reconstruction for safety net hospitals was 21%, while the rate for non-safety net hospitals was 37%. By 2011, the rate of reconstruction for both groups had significantly increased, and the rate increased by a greater degree in safety net hospitals to 45% compared to 52% in the non-safety net hospitals. This narrowed the gap from 16% down to 7%. The results from this study validate and support ongoing federal government initiatives to support safety net hospitals, similar to initiatives in different specialties. This study also serves to provide baseline data for other investigative interventions to determine ways to further bridge the gap between the two hospital types. Future work in bridging the gap depends on the etiology of the differences. If a gap remains secondary to presentation at late stage of disease, efforts should work on patient education for self-exams and increasing screening. If the gap is related to breast reconstruction access, efforts should be made to increase plastic surgeon referrals and retaining plastic surgeons. Once we've maximized our efforts and access to reconstruction, we can focus on improving quality performance metrics and patient outcomes for all breast reconstruction patients. The authors of the current study should be congratulated for their excellent work.